So, what we would like to do today is to uh, look back at what we have done so far and then apply it for different applications. Specific example I would like to take today is uh, oxygen uh, sag in river systems. We have spoken about it uh, at an earlier stage, but uh, today we thought we look at you know how various numbers come together in trying to understand what happens to oxygen in a river and how the pollution load that we introduce into the river due to variety of reasons either man made or natural whatever that uh, how it affects the river's oxygen supply and the, how we can restore and things like that. Okay. This is what we would like to do in this exercise. So, uh, let us quickly recall what uh, we have uh, done before. So, we have a river system going this way and you have let us say sewage enters the river. Okay. Now, this river may have a certain velocity okay. and as this river flows and as this sewage gets mixed with this river and uh, therefore, the sewage oxygen or what is called the oxygen demand oxygen demand of the waste. So, this oxygen demand of the waste will start to utilize whatever oxygen that is present in the water and whatever oxygen that diffuses from the atmosphere into the water and therefore, you will find that the oxygen availability would be different from what it was previously. We would like to of course, see how this oxygen levels uh, deplete and how the oxygen levels restore itself and so on. So, let us write our uh, to just to recap just to recap uh, let us write our equations once again. So, we have we are doing, uh, writing a balance for oxygen so input of oxygen minus output of oxygen plus generation of oxygen equal to accumulation of oxygen. Okay. So, let us write it for steady state by steady state we mean th that, that there is no change with respect to time as we go along the river. So, this is not there. So, let us say the velocity of the river velocity of the river is u. So, u and cross section area is v as a. So, at any position x minus of u a c at any position x plus delta x and then you have oxygen supply because of uh, oxygen transfer. So, I will call that as some k 2 times C s minus of C some a delta x this is the amount of oxygen that is coming in from the atmosphere okay, oxygen and now you have the oxygen present in the river which is consumed by the pollution. So, let us say in due to our sewage input the uh, sewage is whatever it is in this region. So, so, you are putting the sewage. So, let us call the sewage load as s. Okay. So, this is the, uh, uh, the oxygen is consumed by the sewage plus you have of course, what is called as r r p minus of r s. So, these are this is photosynthetic oxygen production this is photos this is the respiratory oxygen demand and sediment oxygen demand times a delta x equal to 0. Okay. Now, this is something we have done I am just doing it once again just to recap what we have done before. So, you have uh, the the material flowing into this control volume let us say this is the control volume. So, much is coming in that means, so much of oxygen is coming in so much of oxygen is going out and then so much of oxygen is supplied during in this this is the oxygen supply k 2 times you know multiplied by a delta x okay. and then some amount of oxygen that is used up because of the pollution load which is this quantity and then naturally uh, you we have uh, photosynthetic oxygen production you have uh, oxygen consumption because of respiration, the oxygen consumption in the sediments, all that is taken into account, and we call this as minus beta. Okay, we call this minus beta. Okay, so let's just simplify this. Just please simplify this. Please help me so that we can put all these numbers. So what I'm going to do now is divide throughout by a delta x and take the limit as x tends to zero and so on. So when you do that, you get minus u d c d x the first term you can see here please see here 
we divide throughout by a delta x. So, it becomes minus u a cancels of d c d x okay, plus k 2 times c s minus of c minus of k 1 s minus of beta equal to 0. Please make sure that our numbers our equations are proper. Okay. You can see here. So, I have let me run through this once again. So, it, this gives you minus u times d c d x. Okay. So, this becomes no change in sign this is a minus sign and this is a minus sign. Okay. Nothing has been nothing nothing new has been done. Okay. All right. Now, uh, we have to solve these equations and we have done this before and and, uh, and we recognize here this s this s is s is pollution load pollution load okay. and this pollution load we assume that it is decays therefore, s at any time is some s naught e to the power of minus of k 1 times tau, where tau equal to uh, residence time residence time residence time of pollution load load. Okay. Now, what we are trying to say is that if k 1 is the rate constant for the removal of the pollution that we put into the water and tau is the residence time. Therefore, any instant at any position after a time of residence uh, you will find that the value of s would be this. Okay. So, that means s naught minus of s would have been the uh, consumption of uh, oxygen of the river. Okay. Now, we have done all these things if you recall we had defined a, a term called oxygen this is what is called oxygen sag this is called oxygen sag. Why is it called oxygen sag? You would generally expect the river to be at uh, uh, near saturation, okay. but at the moment it is different from saturation. So, it is this difference which is called oxygen sag. What is important for us is to recognize that the oxygen sag should be as small as possible showing that the oxygen level in the river must be close to saturation. So, that aquatic life is able to uh, perform its natural functions. So, we have solved this problem we have solved this problem for uh, the situations of our interest and I just write down the solution because we have done this before. So, we will not do this again because it is already well known to us. So, we will not do this again I will just write down the solutions that we know. Okay. So, what we have shown before this is what we have shown before that psi equal to k 1 s naught divided by k 2 minus of k 1 okay. e raised to the power of minus of k 1 tau e raised to the power of minus of k 2 tau okay. plus beta divided by k 2 1 minus e raised to the minus of k 2 tau okay. plus some this is the initial k 2 tau. Okay. So, this is the solution that we have uh, already gotten. Now, here k 1 k 1 is uh, pollution removal removal rate constant rate constant okay. and k 2 is re aeration rate constant. Okay. And psi i is initial sag. What is initial sag? It is C s minus whatever is the oxygen at the suppose we have this river like this. So, you have uh, pollution coming in. So, as soon as you mix the two and whatever is the initial level of oxygen in the river as soon as it is gets mixed up with the pollution okay. that is called initial sag. Okay, called initial. Often it is called as initial, initial deficit. Initial deficit. Now uh, the the problem that we would like to solve. Let me just uh, quickly uh, explain the problem that we want to solve. See, the problem we want to solve is the following. You have a river then you have uh, it is coming in at 1000 q 
cubic meters per day. Okay. You are putting in 100 cubic meters per day of pollution containing COD equal to uh, 500 milligrams per liter. It does not seem to have much uh, BOD in the sense that this is an industrial pollution which is uh, COD, BOD has been removed in the treatment what is left behind is only COD. So, it is going into the river. Okay. Now, it is coming with DO or oxygen as nil that means there is no oxygen in this water okay. and while the river the oxygen is coming in at it is oxygen solubility is given as 6 milligrams per liter it is 90 percent saturated. 90 percent saturation. So, it is he here is C uh, equal to uh, 5.4 milligrams per liter. Okay. Is that clear? So, river velocity is 0.1 it is not flowing uh, velocity is low per river uh, 0.1. Now, this these numbers are chosen just to sort of uh, come as close as possible to some of the problems that we may encounter in tropical regions such as ours, because uh, particularly the Deccan rivers for example, there is not much water for much of the year excepting during uh, the monsoons and whatever river flows it will be largely due to a dam which holds the water and then releases the water as per the requirements of the downstream population. Therefore, the river flows may not be very large. Okay. So, keeping that in mind the velocities that I mentioned here are very low. Okay. So, the question is let me just state the questions. So, we want to k 1 uh, k 1 is given as 0 0.3 per day and k 2 which is re aeration rate constant is given as 0 0.7 0 0.7 per day okay. k, k 2 equal to 0 0.7 per day this is what is given. So, we have to find out max sag okay, number 1 and number 2 where max sag occurs okay, and 3 where where downstream where downstream d o reaches 90 percent saturation okay, and then where downstream and 4 what is the COD when max sag occurs. Some usual questions these are all usual questions that we would like to know about a river when it is uh, affected by uh, human interference. Okay. So, this, some of these things of course, we have done. So, this is not new to us. So, let us look at this whole situation one by one and then try to so, our, our equation please recall, please recall here that this is the equation, this is the equation that tells us what is the sag at for different residence times. Okay. Now, what is psi is defined as saturation minus of C i. Okay. So, first to start with you know we have to find out what is the initial state. So, let us find the initial state and then once you know the initial state we can do all the rest. So, what is the initial state? The initial state is you now let us say we have uh, 6 uh, into 0.9. So, th this is 5.4 into 1000 uh, cubic meters per and divided by total flow is 1000 plus 100. So, this is the uh, d o in the river. So, is it correct? So, the multiplied by 100 multiplied by 0. So, what is the d o in the river? Now, let us calculate, let us calculate what is the d o in the river uh, as soon as the pollution reaches. Okay. So, we have uh, calculate. So, d o in river in river equal to 0 0.9 multiplied by 0 0.6 multiplied by 1000. This is what is coming in plus uh, from sewage there is nothing is coming so, divided by 1000 plus 100. Okay. So, that you can do this simple calculation that comes out to 4.9 milligrams per liter is the oxygen. Okay. Now, similarly COD in river, COD in river is how much? You are coming up 500 multiplied by 1000 
correct sorry COD just means 500 multiplied by 100 100 is the sewage that is coming in and then uh, you have 1000 cubic meters into it is coming in at uh, what is mentioned uh, let me just please check this what is coming at 5 milligrams per liter COD of the incoming water is 5 milligrams per liter. Okay. So, divided by 1100 okay. that is it is 1000 plus 100 is 1100. So, when you do this calculation it comes out to be 50 milligrams per liter. What are we saying now? We have a river into which sewage has entered and then as a result of that we have COD here is 50 milligrams per liter oxygen which is C i equal to 4.9. So, that is the state uh, at the point where the uh, sewage has entered and uh, this is the state of the river at the time where you enter this. Okay. Our intention is what happens as it goes along, how long, what is the time, it, what is the residence time or what is the length of the river that it takes for it to restore itself and so on. These are the questions that we want to answer, but we have solved these kinds of problems before. So, we can very quickly find out what is what is psi i by definition it is C s minus of C i which is uh, 0.9 multiplied by 6 minus of 4.9 okay. that becomes 0 0.5 milligrams per liter. We start like this okay. is that clear. So, our equation is here. So, we want to know when this uh, how, how low this can become of course, we do some trial calculation etcetera. So, let us put psi equal to 0 and find out where uh, this becomes uh, uh, at what uh, residence time this psi becomes 0. So, when you put that when we put psi when you, when you put c equal to 0 or psi equal to 5.4 milligrams per liter what is meant by that when you put c equal to 0 that means at any at any position at any position psi equal to c s minus of c correct. So, if you put c equal to 0 then psi becomes c s correct that is the highest sag that we can have. So, we can see at what position it, uh, it this very uh, very poor very bad situation arises. So, when you put psi equal to that corresponding to 5.4 equal to what is the what is tau okay, which means what we will have to put psi equal to 5.4 here you know k 1 you know k 2 you know s naught s naught is 50 you know all that beta we generally take beta as, as 0 because saying that basically this oxygen is not available for our purpose. So, we take beta as 0. So, only thing is that we have to take this term and this term. So, we can solve for given psi equal to 5.4 we can find what is tau it is a fairly not a difficult calculation I am not saying it is simple we can do it graphically what is tau. So, we get solving I have done this for you solving we get tau equal to when you do this I get a tau of about 0 0.4 per day 0 0.4 0 0.4 days. Okay. Is that clear what are we saying now what we are saying is that that after putting this up to about after about 0.4 days our velocity is 1 kilometers per hour. So, which means that after a distance of about 0.4 kilometers you will find that the oxygen has become 0 oxygen in the river has become 0. So, it is the point we are trying to say. So, which means that oxygen level in river becomes equal to 0 at tau equal to 0.4 days or distance d equal to 0.4 multiplied by 0.1 multiplied by 0.4 that is equal to 0 0.04 kilometers. At this distance it has become very quickly it goes to very small value. Okay. So, this is the first question. The second question is I mean it becomes 0 all right. What happens to COD at this point? What is the value of COD at this point? If I ask you what will you say? So, we can calculate that also. So, what is the COD at this point? COD at this point is S equal to S naught e raised to the power of minus of k 1 times tau. So, S naught is 50. So, e raised to the power of exponential of k 1 is 0.3 with a minus sign. Okay multiplied by tau which is 0 
So, this turns out to be that is about 44 milligrams per liter. Okay. Now, the, the point of interest to us is I mean what distance uh, after which you know the systems uh, start to uh, improve itself. Now, in other words I mean we want this this value 44 to become 5. Okay, because that is what the river was when it uh, when it uh, the sewage was entering. So, or in other words, what is tau when uh, s equal to five milligrams per liter? So, how do we calculate that? We put s as five and s naught as fifty. So, we can calculate. Therefore, we can do that calculation. So, five equal to fifty exponential of minus of k one is 0.3 times tau. So, we can do this calculation 5 by 50 is 0.1 ln of 0.1 is uh, 2.303. So, becomes uh, 2.303 minus uh, divided by 0.3 how much is this 2.303 divided by 0.3 equal to 7.67. So, at tau equal to 7.67 days or implying the velocity is velocity is fairly low it is 0.1 kilometers per hour. So, 7.67 multiplied by 0.1 multiplied by 24 equal to 18 kilometers. COD level re reaches the initial um, the earlier point at 18 kilometers. This is a small error here. I just correct this for you. I have to multiply this by 24, which I forgot. So, when I multiply this by 24, this becomes 24 is about 0.96 kilometers. Okay. All right. So, let us just uh, cut the long story short that. Uh, so, if I ask you what is the level of uh, oxygen level, let me write this here because it is taking too much space. So, if I ask you what is what is d o at uh, tau equal to 7.67 okay, days, which means at after 18 kilometers. So, you can calculate that once again our equations are all with us. So, we have to once I say that tau is 7.67, you can find out what is the uh, d o at that point. So, that means uh, psi is known means uh, d o is known because it is simply if you put psi c s is 6 or 5.4, you can find out what is the d o. So, what we are trying to say here is that I mean that point is not to be forgotten that if you have an industrial waste coming into water, our uh, solution suggests that you know the river requires sufficient distance before it restores itself. Very clearly showing that you know our river systems really do not have the oxygen capacity to manage industrial pollution. So, we need to look at this problem seriously and see that you know we do not allow uh, our uh, waters to be interfered by you know COD kind of pollution. So, you must treat them prior to it. So, that what you put into the river is not COD of 250 and 300 and 500, but something like the less than 5 less than. So, that you know the river has the ability to manage the pollutions that is that is entering. Okay. So, what in, what in other words you are trying to say is that the natural aeration capacity of the river is really meant for the natural biology of the river and not for human generated pollution. So, human generated pollution must find its mechanisms of treatment and not be dependent on the river systems. Okay, that is the point we are trying to put across. Okay. So, this, this one example is to illustrate how our fundamentals of reaction engineering come together uh, to solve uh, or to, uh, to explain how we can manage our river systems and how we can keep it in good shape and ensure that our uh, uh, biology of the river is uh, in good health and so that our uh, dependence on the river systems for our health etcetera are ensured. Let us go to the next example. The next example we would like to look at is, uh, is something uh, which uh, all of us have uh, encountered. That is, we want to see how we can use population balance modeling to understand a forest. Okay. We are still in the general area of environment. See our forests are uh, source of water, source of uh, raw materials, 
source of food, source of fruits, source of timber, you name it, you know, it is forest that really sustains human populations and unless we know how to look after our forests, we will have problems in future. And let us remember forest is not just uh, you know uh, greenery, forest has animals and it is these animals and whose interdependence uh, ensure that the forest is in good health. So, this particular exercise uh, which you would like to do, uh, it reads something like this. It says, we have a forest, there are animals in this forest. Okay. It says, what does it say? Animals are born continuously at the rate of s minus of 0. So, S, S is the age, age of the animals, okay. age of animals. Animals are born at a rate which is given and animals die at a constant rate, animals die at a constant rate d which is given alpha times s, okay. where beta and alpha are constants. So, what has happened? You have you have a forest which is not there is no interference, there is no there is there is no such movement out to the forest. Okay. There is nothing coming in, there is nothing going out. Okay. What, what we are saying is that this is it is a closed system, it is a closed system in which animals are born, animals grow, okay, animals die. Now, it is reasonably well known there is plenty of data that exists around the world that a forest left to itself is at, at steady state. By steady state what we mean is that if you take a sample of population wherever it may be that population does not change with time. Okay. In other words the birth and death process that is taking going on inside this environment called forest remains reasonably well balanced. Okay. Now, it is when only when we interfere that these things seem to go out of control. In other words, of course, we all require forest for our dependence. So, we require uh, to harvest various products of the forest as all this is well understood, but perhaps what is important is that whatever we interfere or whatever we take out of the forest must be so small compared to its internal regeneration capacity. So, that the, uh, the health of the forest remains essentially unaffected. And the situation of forests around the world is, is precarious as you all know whether it is Indonesian forest, whether it is Amazon, Amazonian forest or forest in the Indian subcontinent, you name it all over the world it is in bad shape and uh, the, the more we can understand the fundamentals of this the better it is for us. So, this particular exercise is just to give you a feel for you know how things might happen it's just a model it does not mean that it is the the best way to understand what is going on. It is a very, very simple way of understanding a very, very complex phenomena that might be in front of us. So, what is it that we want to do? What we want to do now is to write our number balance about what is happening in this forest. Okay. So, we have let us say, let us out the balances some input, output, generation equal to accumulation. Okay, this is our balance that we have been writing for a long time. We must adapt this for our forest. Let us adapt this now. Okay, so, I will still carry on with our forest. Okay. So, input, output plus generation or birth minus uh, death, okay. both are there equal to accumulation. Now, we say that it does not change. Um, this is the most important point that we want to recognize, understand and carry home in our message that forest is essentially at steady state. Okay. And uh, if we must understand the fundamentals of how it keeps itself at steady state, so that when we intervene, if at all we intervene, we would like to intervene minimally, so that this is not disturbed too much. After all, we require the forest for our timber, we require the forest for our for our fruits, you know, we require it for our uh, firewood maybe, and we require it for you know managing the carbon dioxide uh, oxygen balance so that you know the uh, the aerobic processes of this environment and the photosynthetic processes are all in balance. And so many issues are connected with a healthy forest. Okay, so we are only looking at a very very small aspects of what is going on. So let us say 
our balances if you recall when we wrote our balance at an earlier stage we it looked like this so that is when we wrote it for a process continuous where it is coming in and going out this is f not this is f1 okay so this is the balance that we have been writing for a long time if you recall okay now we want to write this for the case of a, a batch process okay that's what we want to write this for so let us learn to write this okay let us learn to write since there are no inflows and outflows so this the, these terms must be deleted these terms must be deleted we know that but we must add to this because add to this the birth and death terms the birth term which is uh, beta times delta of s minus of 0 and then you have uh, the other term which is alpha s. So, this is the birth term, this is the death term correct equal to 0. So, what, what is it that we have done? What we have done is that uh, we have written the material balance we have derived all this therefore, I am not going through this once again we have derived all this. So, we have the uh, population balance in which we have uh, deleted the input term we have deleted the output term because there is there is no input there is no input there is no output in the sense that there is no flow out of out of the forest we have removed those two terms. So, this is this is the term which is uh, what we call as uh, the, uh, the the change in age and so on okay and this is the birth term this is the death term so what do we have so, beta beta delta of s s minus 0 i have not written minus alpha of s equal to d by ds of uh, f1 r1 v is it all right what we are saying now when we talked about when we talked about this is what this is rate of change of property what is our property this property is age so okay so it is in a sense it is time so our this r1 by definition is is what I will call this property as S. So, we have d by d t of our property which is S which is age and age is time. So, here S equal to t and therefore, it is equal to 1 something that we have said when we talked about uh, residence time distribution nested tank. If you recall we did say this at an earlier stage when we talked about residence time distribution nested tank and there we said that so, there we said that uh, if you want to find out the residence time distribution, okay, the why I am doing to do this again and again is that if we learn how to apply population balance, where we are talking about numbers, then we can deal with variety of situations uh, of daily life. This might be what movement of shares in a market, okay. this might be you know how uh, uh, you know a population of a of a town village etcetera changes a variety of things that we would like to know uh, in daily life. So, I am just thought it is important that we try to understand this that it is a closed system there is no input there is no output therefore, we remove the first two terms generation is because of birth and then death there is a continuous it can happen at all times. So, I we have taken both these terms and therefore, this this particular uh, term which talks about you know, what happens inside the forest that effect is also taken into account. So, okay. birth and death how they affect how the population changes that effects are shown here. So, we have uh, our equation I will put r 1 equal to 1 here so, sorry minus so minus equal to 0. Okay. So, our equation looks like this okay, that beta times delta of s minus of 0 minus of alpha s e minus d by d s of r r 
R 1 equal to 1 we have shown just now multiplied by V multiplied by your distribution function f 1. Okay. This is, okay. is it clear R is 1. So, we have our equation beta of s minus of alpha of s equal to d by d s of v times f 1. Beta by v and alpha by v uh, you know they are constants. Okay. Okay, beta by v, alpha by v are constants. Okay, so that now we have, uh, I can, I mean, for the moment, I denote beta by v as beta, alpha by v as alpha for our, uh, for the sake of uh, this one. So I'll retain this as beta. Uh, maybe I can call this as beta dash, so that you know, this becomes uh, beta by v is, is beta dash by v is beta and alpha dash by v is alpha. So it becomes alpha s equal to d by d s of f 1. So, minus minus all minus equal to 0 equal to 0. Okay. Now, so delta of s delta of s okay, delta of s. So, our equation. So, what is it that we have now? What we have now is beta times delta of s minus 0 minus of alpha times s minus of d by d s of f 1 equal to 0. Okay. This is the equation that we have to solve. Is that okay? Now, I just want to spend a few minutes here and, uh, and uh, go through the whole thing once again. Okay. Please bear with me. I will put a dash here. So, we have a forest where the birth rate is given as beta dash delta s minus 0, death rate is given as alpha dash s minus of 0. This is our equation that describes the number density. Now, we said that you know this input output is how we started our population balance, but there is no input, there is no output. That is how this equation looks like this, okay? birth and death and so on. Okay? So, then we said then we said that we can write this as beta dash okay and then so that when you put this rate rate of rate of change of property r1 as 1 because we said s refers to age it really s refers to time basically therefore d by dt is equal to 1 that's how we uh, substituted r1 as 1 then we said r1 is 1 then beta dash by v we said beta and therefore we got this equation therefore we have this equation which will tell us this is the equation which will tell us how the what is f 1? It is the age distribution age distribution in forest. How the age distribution in forest and how this age distribution is affected by beta and alpha. Or in other words, how birth and death process adjust themselves to keep the age distribution unchanged in a forest. This is what we are trying to say. Now, to solve this equation, we said that we will remove the, uh, the unbounded term and solve the homogeneous equation and then to get the uh, constant of integration, we will generate a boundary condition. Therefore, solve this to first is solve homogeneous equation. What is the homogeneous equation? D f 1 by d s minus of s equal to 0. Okay. So, what is the solution? What is the solution? We can say f of s equal to minus of alpha s squared by 2 plus c. It's, this is a very elementary thing you will uh, there is nothing to there is nothing much here. Okay. I call it f 1. So, solution is f 1 of s is alpha s squared by 2 plus c. This is the solution. So, how do you find constant of integration? How do you find constant of integration? So, to find constant of integration to find to find constant of integration. For that what we do is that we take balance take balance between s minus of d s and s as s tends to 0 d s tends to 0. Okay. So, we write all the inputs all the outputs, huh? all the generations and generation generations and then birth 
death and so on equal to 0. So, there is no input, there is no output. So, what is the generation? We said uh, f 1 r 1 v at s minus d s f 1 r 1 v at s okay. then you have generation which is beta delta s minus 0 s minus of 0 d s okay, beta s into v okay, uh, minus alpha s d s v okay, equal to 0. Is this all right with everybody what we have said? we are uh, writing we are writing balance between s minus d s and s. Therefore, this is material generated at s contributing to s minus s, s minus d s to s and then s to outside. Therefore, this is the difference that accumulates in the interval. Okay, this is due to birth and this is due to death and there is no generation. Okay. Is this clear what we are saying? Now, we have to do a limit at s tends to 0 d s tends to 0. D s tends to 0, this goes away, there is no element that belongs to less than 0, so it goes away and then beta delta s d s, this, uh, this whole thing becomes. Therefore, this from here we get f 1, r 1 is 1, v cancels off, you can see here f 1 at 0 equal to beta. Is that clear what we are saying? See how beautifully the material balances come together. So, what we have said here, I mean this is common sense, this is also common sense. So, okay. so what have we got? We have got here, please notice. So, our solution, so our, uh, our f 1 of s, we said is minus of alpha s squared by 2 plus constant and that constant of integration and what we have said f of 0 equal to beta. So, you put here beta here this gives you c equal to beta. So, our solution is equal to minus of r squared by 2 plus beta. Okay. Now, we should have integral f 1 d s equal to 1 that means, of all ages all ages when we integrate over all ages this is equal to 1 by definition. Therefore, that implies let me just do this once again. So, f 1 of s equal to minus of alpha s squared by 2 plus beta. Okay. Then integral if it takes inti integrating uh, please help me integrating uh, over all ages all ages uh, assuming s 0 to 1 uh, normal as all I will call it normalized age you know you, when I say normalized normalized age. Okay. So, this becomes 1 equal to minus of alpha s cube by 6 plus beta. This is all right. Okay. Beta uh, shall we say beta is that correct beta s going from 0 to 1. So, this becomes 1 equal to beta minus alpha by 6. Okay, or we get beta equal to 6 minus of alpha by 6. So, this is the kind of relationship that exists between uh, alphas and betas. Okay. Let us just quickly review this what we have said. What we have said is that if you have a forest, if you have a forest Okay. and then uh, there is birth and death processes in the forest, then you will I mean in order that steady state is established, we must have that the birth and death process adjust themselves. Otherwise, the forest will not be at steady state and this is so, if there is no external interference, if there is an interference clearly these problems are far more serious. So, the point of this exercise is that, uh, that uh, we must appreciate and we must um, design our uh, our uh, inroads into forest uh, with an appreciation of the fact that alpha and beta are related and we must not disturb that relationships i think that is the fundamental message that this kind of problems that uh, bring it to us if to our daily life 
So, let us go to the third exercise, uh, a relatively uh, simpler kind of exercise, which we want to look at now, which is uh, what we call as uh, the third exercise we want to look at, of course, um, uh, it is a very uh, big uh, industry, steel making is a huge industry in this world and uh, steel making comes from blast furnace as you all know. Now, then you must start asking you know why is it that sponge iron which is a more recent kind of technology and uh, why is it uh, is it gaining more and more popularity. The reasons are many. Now, the reasons are that uh, blast furnace technology is suitable for very, very large scale productions. Okay. Now, and therefore, huge investments and then huge interference in the environment and so on. But sponge iron is uh, it's more expensive technology, but it is suitable for much smaller scale operation. You see that is the most important part of sponge iron technology and uh, I thought we should spend some time and more importantly that you know we should appreciate some of the chemical reactions that are so central to the sponge iron technology. So, that uh, we appreciate how uh, you can also make uh, sponge iron uh, for various purposes because once you make sponge iron it is then used for steel making and this is the next part of the process. So, so we are looking at sponge iron. What is the technology? It is Fe 2 let us say Fe 2 O 3 plus thrice H 2 gives you twice Fe plus 3 H 2 O. Okay. Now, you notice this K p for this reaction at 25 C is very small. The heat of reaction, heat of reaction turns out to be 7 kilocal per mole, it is endothermic. You need to supply heat energy to be able to conduct this reaction. Okay. Now, let us just look at, so you have uh, a solid, this is you have hydrogen diffusing as hydrogen goes inside, okay, goes inside and then it starts to react and then we say that you know the, the core keeps on keeps on drifting inside. So, it is a shrinking core, we have done that, okay. shrinking core. So, if you look at a model a, 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 assuming that it is a spherical particle. So, as the reaction proceeds we would expect that the this is the reacted layer, okay? this is the unreacted layer. So, some, some other time if you look at another time, so maybe it is like this, this is the reacted layer. So, what we have? We have external diffusion, external diffusion of hydrogen what is meant by external diffusion? That means, there is a, a layer through which the diffusion of uh, hydrogen occurs. So, there could be a resistance to the external diffusion, then there is internal diffusion, this could there could be a resistance because of uh, internal diffusion which is the, the product layer okay. Okay. and then there could be a what is called resistance due to chemical reaction. That means, the chemical reaction also uh, there is certain amount of resistance. So, essentially in any of these reactions you should expect that external diffusion, internal diffusion and a chemical reaction all three of them could be important. In other words we must be able to calculate what is the resistance due to each of these uh, uh, controlling steps. Let us quickly calculate these controlling steps, so that we have an idea of the, uh, the resistances. Let me do a quick calculation, a quick calculation for you one minute and just write the equations down and then. Okay. Now, we have if you recall, if you recall that we have shown, we have shown if you have a single pellet see we have done this, we have done this before, we have taken spherical pellets and then we have shown that the time for certain extent of reaction is given by R c by R. Let me explain this, in, in a, just give me a minute and then I will be back with you. R c cube by R cube plus 1 minus thrice R c by R whole squared 
twice R C by R whole cube. Okay, where we know that R C by R equal to R C by I equal to one minus of x b to the power of one by three. So I'm just saying a gas plus let us say b b solid equal to products. Okay. So, if you have this kind of reaction, so we have the time that is required for the reaction. Uh, suppose R C by R can be put in terms of X B. Therefore, let us say we want 50 percent conversion. Therefore, if you replace R C by R like this, so we can calculate what is the time that is required for 50 percent conversion, 60 percent conversion, 80 percent conversion and so on. In other words, what we are trying to say here is that we can calculate the time for given extent of reaction. Okay. What is all these numbers tau r? Let me just put them down because this is let me I will put them in the next page because it is not enough space here. Okay. Bear with me. So, just bear with me. I will just write here very so that you know t equal to tau r 1 minus of r c by r tau f 1 minus of r c cube by r cube plus tau d 1 minus of thrice r c squared by r squared plus twice r c cube by r cube. Okay. Now, tau r we know this rho b r divided by b times k s times c a g rho f we know all these things from our previous exercises thrice b k g times c a g and tau d is equal to rho b r squared divided by 6 b d c a g. So, what we are trying to say here now is that since the, these are all known quantities because we know the concentration, we know the rate constants, we will tell you how to calculate all this for in this particular example. So, what we are trying to say is that if you have sponge ion to be uh, to be manufactured, then if you know all these numbers for this reaction, which we will do shortly, then we can calculate the time that is required for this reaction to go to a different extent. Okay. So, we will look at this in greater detail when we meet next time. So, what I am trying to put across to you is that sponge ion technology essentially is, is, a, is an example of reaction between ferric oxide or it is called hematite with hydrogen to give you iron and this is what goes to steel making. This goes to steel making. Thank you very much.